This is episode 85 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I am joined by William. Everything's made up, but the points matter. Haywood. A hundred points to Anakin in the Starfighter. And Paul, best coast pairings, McKelvey. I didn't come up with a cool catchphrase yet. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> it's it's all right. It's all right. Well, you you have another chance next time. So for those of you who are listening at home or watching in the future or watching in the current, what is that? The cur- whatever now present. in the present in the live um, today. The synopsis is we're going to be talking about best coast pairings. If you haven't heard about that. Um, Basically, it's a pairing system that goes through an app and some fancy software, and I don't know anything about it. So I was like, Paul, you know what? Instead of just going back and forth through email, just come on the show. Let's talk about it and and teach us things because it's going to be relevant for X-Wing here pretty soon. We're going to be touching on the Grand Republic. The article dropped uh, earlier last week about the Grand Republic and the Separatists. We're not going to hit the Separatists yet. I know some of you want it. I, I haven't quite dived into that information yet, but I got a lot of Grand Republic information. And we got a Resistance A-Wing article today, so we'll go ahead and pick through that. I want to remind you of our upcoming live streams. We have our Wednesday night league uh, every Wednesday from about 4 5 p.m. to 11.30. If you missed us last week, we actually had our league championships. If you missed it, don't worry. Our uh, games are recorded, and those will be live later this week, so you can find out the conclusion of Season 1 of our second edition league. Also, the Philadelphia System Open uh, stream will be happening November 30th through December 2nd. Super excited about that. And just a reminder to our patrons, uh, you have your last opportunity to ask me a question while under the influence of a lot of crazy medicine for my wisdom uh, teeth surgery. Your last chance for that is Wednesday, this Wednesday uh, at 11.59. That's when the Google form cuts off. I'll organize the questions for my wife, and she'll be asking me those this Friday. Recording, We'll get it recorded, edit it, and put it out in a couple of days. Should be a lot of fun there. And we need to shout out our new patrons. Thank you to Brian. You are so lovely. Lovely. And Ross Sanders, Scott Ross, Nathan Bridge, Benedict Link, Odin Collins, Rich Snyder, Lauren Butner, Sam Semino, and Brendan Loftus. I think that's like the best I've read a list of names in a while. That was pretty solid. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, next thing, if you ordered templates, I just got a message from Andrew Knuckles, the Curl Paw Creatives. They're the ones who are making our templates for us. And he said, Dion, I'm sending you the first shipment tomorrow. First shipment is on the boat officially. Uh, we ordered so many templates. He's actually having to divide the shipments up. So that's awesome. So I should have those soon. And basically, whoever ordered them first will be uh, getting those shipped out first. And then we'll... We'll get them all out. I have only 10 sets left. I remember last week I told you sold, they're sold out. I was able to add some more, and I, I put it out to patrons first, and I said, hey, guys, uh, you guys get first shot at them, and now I have 10 left as of right now. Uh, if you're a patron, though, and you want to use your exclusive code, that is posted on Patreon um, under the secret Patreon pages where nobody else can see it. So go ahead. Make sure you use that code to get uh, some monies off. And just a reminder to our patrons, our upcoming uh, set that should be shipping next week is our Cassian Andor, Duchess, Trandoshan Slaver, and a Mystery Card. Now let's get into it. Let's talk about Best Coast Pairings. Paul, it's time for you to take the wheel, my friend. You know, I, I made a list of questions. I have them, but I'm pretty much, I'm handing the show over to you, my friend, because, um... Like what? I guess we'll start with like what is best coast pairings? I'll tell you at first. When I saw the name, like I I, I thought I thought I was being like trolled a little bit. Like ah, best coast, <laughs> best coast, west coast, best coast. And I was like, no, north coast, best coast. You know, just uh, just being silly. But um, actually, I clicked on your link, so I was like, oh wait, no, this is a legit thing. So what's uh what's best coast pairings? Well, uh, in a nutshell, it's uh an application that or a suite of applications that have been put together to make it easy for anyone to run a tournament of a competitive game system and uh, give you tools that uh, may not have been available for you uh, before, such as player remote check-in, online ticketing, player scoring, list submission, viewing. I mean, list goes on and on and on from there. 
But at the core, it's a, it's an easy way for anyone to become a TO and start running tournaments. That's pretty cool. So we heard uh, from Steve Cameron from Cascade Games that they're partnering with you guys for the System Open Series. And I know I don't know if you guys are doing the other games outside of X-Wing, but I know uh, when it comes to people listening to this show, X Wing is what we care about, so we we have we need those details. Like, what what is the plan? When is the first event? This is happening. Like, what what can you give me? Well, I can tell you that uh, this weekend, um, depending on when we're well, I guess we're we're doing it live here at this point. But um, I'm going to be heading out to Atlanta. There, uh, we're going to be test, testing out with Cascade at the uh, Destiny event at DreamHack Atlanta. Um, and then assuming everything goes smoothly there, uh, we'll be going on to the, uh, PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia and, um, seeing, making sure that, uh, BCP is able to run the, uh, event with Cascade there for X-Wing, Destiny, uh, Keyforge and L5R. Very cool. So one thing that I know that a lot of expert players are really into is, um, you know, they 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 want to know the details. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start digging a little bit, and uh, just give me whatever information you you can. So um, so I I open up the app, right? Mm -hmm. What can I expect it to do as a player? So I'm looking at it. What what can I do in this app? Well, so uh, basically, when you when you first get registered, in, everything links across through your email address, and and oh. you don't even actually have to use the player app, but the player app's where all the really really fun stuff comes in. Um, there's, there's two apps, really. There's the tournament organizer app, which is what the TO uses, or event organizer, um, and then the player app. Um, from the player side of things, you uh, in the player app, you're able to go in there and see your pairings and find out what table you're supposed to be at and, and uh, who you're facing off against. Uh, you can go through the previous rounds and see uh, how everyone's done. You can watch your buddies from outside if you want to. Um, and then as lists are submitted, uh, you can actually go through and see the list for everyone that submitted their list into the event. Um, and then at the end, see the placings. Very cool. So um, when I register for an event, so I'm, I'm, I'm a part of it, like does mm -hmm. the, does the sign up for the app happen like on event day? Can I sign up beforehand? Does it depend on the TO? How's that all work? Well, so I would actually say if, if someone's looking to use BCP, download it. It's free. Uh, BCP Player and iOS uh, for I, the iTunes uh, App Store or Google Play. Uh, go through and make your account and uh, just use your email address. And then when you actually register for an event, uh, as, as far as either getting there and to the where you're going to be playing in the tournament at, um, or if the, your tournament has online ticket sales or online registration beforehand, just use the same email address. And your email address is how it links you to that event in the player app. So as long as you register with the TO app with that email address, it will pop up in your events on the player app. Very cool. So um, so you said it does pairings? like, mm -hmm. it, And does it like, does it like pop up on my phone or something like that? Does it shoot me a text? Like how, how or do I just look at it? I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Like, I don't know what the capabilities of yeah, it is. So in, <clears throat> We just added push notifications to, uh, so when round one launches, you'll get a push notification that you can click on the push notification. It'll launch you right into your pairing screen. Uh, if, if you don't see your name right away, you can just hit the, you can type in your name and search for it and it'll show what table you're supposed to be at and what, a, what opponent you're supposed to be up against. Um, basically each event has its own event screen inside the player app that gives you the option to go to uh, see the roster, see the pairings or see the placings, change your event details um, or see the web link for the event. Um, for people who don't have uh, an Android or a Apple device, uh, you're able to look on the web. Uh, actually, and when the event goes live, you also get an email address that, that takes, sends you, or I'm sorry, you get an email sent to your email address that uh, takes you to the website so you can actually even look at it online. Uh, we find that for every one person playing an event, we get three people watching the event. It's friends, family members, teammates that are uh, looking to see how you're doing in the event and wanting to see what you're doing. Oh, so you, so you, I can. So one thing when we were chatting back and forth. So I'm a, I'm a major streamer for X Wing, mm -hmm. and I know like being able to see rankings and lists and all these things. That sounds like something I need. I need to, I need that in my life. So you're telling me I'm going to be able to, to have that information uh, just by opening up your guys' web page. Yeah, and find the, the website and and find the event on uh, through the events listing. 
And without even getting into the app, you can actually just go in there and see all the pairings and how everyone's placing. And as their scores come rolling in, it will update to show the scores as they get result uh, reported in. And uh, yeah, everything's there. It's, there's no mystery to, to how someone got their path of victory anymore. You can see it the entire way. Um, and then if you're a player in the event, you're able to see all the uh, all of the lists that have been submitted for it. And uh, that's where it gets really, really, really cool is being able to go in, into it and see all the lists and some of the stuff that we're doing with the lists um, and being able to standardize list format so we can actually pull the data out of the list. Um, I've been watching uh, what happened with Minoc over the last weekend and how they generated the, the report of uh, all that really cool data on how mm -hmm. many chassis were flown and, and how many uh, pilots were used. And uh, we can even get down to the, the upgrade level and see all the upgrades that were done on ships and stuff like that. And then calculate that against the win percentage and what round they ended up uh, getting knocked out. All, I mean, all kinds of stuff we can do because we can actually even break down the what's in the list themselves instantaneously. Yeah, I mean, that, that information is something that the X-Wing community absolutely loves. I mean, people love stats, right? They like to be able to mm -hmm. dig through that. And I know that uh, there's a big contingency of um, developers in the X-Wing community that created a... Um, a machine learning language for X-Wing called XWS, right? Mm -hmm. And and that is what people have used to really to build these awesome uh, spreadsheets and all that stuff. So I'm excited to see, um, hopefully, if, uh, you know, Best Coast Pairings, um, this app becomes live, that um, we're going to be able to just have that at our fingertips a lot faster than somebody having to trudge through, <laughs> through it all manually. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the, uh, the hope is that, uh, when we're looking at a couple different squad builders that, you know, that it just depends on what format they export into and, and knowing there's a standard format that uh, some of the squad builders are using, like yet another squad builder and stuff like that. It gives us something to work off of. Right I... now we have it set up to just accept the FFG app, but before packs, we're going to expand it to accept a couple different other uh, squads or uh, uh, um, rosters. Paul, Paul, look at me. We need yet another squad builder in there. That is that is, <laughs> like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. Like that is hands down the most by, by your tournament level players, hands down your your most used squadron builder when it comes to like if you need to submit a list, your best players are using that. I, I, I like you have I know I understand the need that you have to support the the F official app, but I will tell you that most 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 players aren't even touching touching that app when it comes to to tournament play because it is it is it's bad. I'm gonna oh. second that for sure. You know, uh, you know, coming from for the 40k world, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. I I I know that there's you guys are used to the other ones and stuff like that, but I we the 40k world doesn't have anything even remotely close to that. And uh, I I know yet another squad builder is, has uh, has a big back in the from the community, but. I, I'm I'm just stoked to see that FFG has given you guys that's the squad builder you guys have and and it takes some. I mean, I, it's, I know it's, how it, apps for sure. Develop. It takes for some sure. Work, but it takes it takes time. I I just know that um like with your initial push, if you could have that ready, I guess I'm asking on behalf of the community, <laughs> if you could have the integration of yet another squad builder in there, you're gonna get like so much more buy-in right away from the X-wing community, like because I I like. I'm just I I have a lot of future sight because I've you know I've I've been in the community for a while now I've been doing content for a long time and it, I I know that that's going to be one of the first if it's not integrated like we're like man ah, they th th that's gonna be the first complaint I had to use the FFG app and I I <laughs> it was really hard and there's even some there's there's been errors in that app where like you can't like link legal upgrades and things like that so there's there's some there's some weird stuff in there but anyway. That that's besides the point. Hopefully you do because I know a lot of people would definitely appreciate it. And and as oh, yeah, as no, would I. We're we're gonna have we're gonna have it supported by PAX. Uh, it's just a, a matter of we have to go through and, and do it. The the cool thing is is that um, with our list acceptance we can we can take multiple different formats. So it's just a matter of us going through and, and um just building out the building out so the B C P can read that list so we can pull the data out of it. But as of right now, you can you can submit a list from the other squad builder, no problem. It's just we can't read the data out of it yet. Cool. But cool. Yeah, we'll su we'll support it by packs. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, like, 
what what inspired you like what's the history behind best coast pairings like i i'm curious because I, I will tell you that before um your connection now to um to cascade games and when you reached out to me like i had i had never heard of heard of this so like how how this all come up oh gosh so it's going back on three years ago um so i've been a 40k player since uh 2000 um and uh, I played uh, Magic before. I mean, Magic was a gateway drug. And then uh, <laughs> got into uh, the Star Wars card game after that. And I played the Star Wars card game. That's really kind of what introduced me to traveling to tournaments and things like that. Um, and then I was actually at Comic-Con and I saw Tau, which was one of the 40K races being, uh, being played. And I kind of fell in love and the rest was history from there. But um, I got... I don't know if you can see it on my wall behind me, but I, I won the ITC, which is the equivalent of our world championships uh, in 2014. And um, then kind of what came about from that is I got asked to run a tournament myself and I'd never, never done it before. And one of my teammates, uh, I was bringing it up with him and he, he said, well, I just built an app for you to do it. And uh, two weeks later we had the, the rough version of BCP. And then a week later ran our first tournament with it and, Three months after that, we were running LVO, which was at that point uh, up to 180 players, which was the biggest 40K tournament at the time. Wow. And uh, I, I decided that if, if LVO worked out okay, we were going to uh, ex see what else we could do with this and ran the tournament just fine. And it was the, the first time that we'd had that someone had, had a 40K event that large and kind of just spiraled from there. We figured out what we needed to do to expand it out and saw the other things we could do with it. And just kept building and now three years later we can't even tell you how many events we've run thousands and and over you know 10 20 000 players and uh it's just uh you know we're, we're averaging right now about 100 events a week Ooh, uh so it's nice. and that that's up from we hit 30 in february of this year so i can kind of give you an idea of how fast it's ramped up this year's been a lot of building up the back end so we can get to the point where we can start building out the really cool stuff for the player app that that is amazing man just starting from something you needed and growing into essentially a business for you that's yeah that's fantastic wow it's fun and it's it's been uh we support 30 different game systems now um we've x-wing has actually been because there's a there's a decently strong x-wing crowd in in my local area um and uh so x-wing is one of the i think it was maybe the third game we supported and uh, just we never really got the the foothold in in the door with the X Wing community like uh, like we'd have liked, but took off with 40k, Age of Sigmar, Shade Spire, and War Machine, and kind of kept building from there. Yeah, I th I think you know you guys getting hooked up with Cascade Games is going to be really good for you guys because I know um, one thing that the X Wing community has talked about a lot is you know having a way. You know, even if it is through the through, through the official app and having to submit a list to connect this to your your guys um your guys uh, your guys app and software, like the idea of being able to electronically have something and send it over and not have to deal with paper, that mm -hmm. just that idea is really attractive to a lot of players who play any game, right? It's just being able to to streamline things for both tos. And I I run a lot of tournaments myself and help out with them, and just uh, the the less stress you, you can you can have out there, the better. Like, I think that's that's an awesome thing that you guys are putting together, and I'm really excited to see um, Cascade Games, who um, who's been doing these system opens, say, "Hey, we recognize a need for this, and want to want to see if we can get this to the uh, I mean, just the FFG community, right? Because it's more than just X Wing." You said, "Yep." Well, especially like with KeyForge coming out, it's a uh, it's a good opportunity for us to get in with KeyForge and and become the incumbent system that people are using to run tournaments and stuff with with it. Because the, the kind of the principle we've gone with now is that it doesn't matter what your game is. Uh, we we build out each we build the app out to support each game individually. Uh, but it doesn't matter what your game is. Is that if if it doesn't matter if you're a forty k to or an x wing to a magic to or keyforge to the app runs the same. So it's the same for the to as it is for the player. So let's say you got thirty people showing up for your x wing tournament and you caught the flu or have to deal with, you know, something with work or the family or something like that is that you can hand that, hand the app off to anyone. And it's the same operation. Even if they're not someone who even knows how to do the game, they may not be able to make rulings or anything like that, but they can still run the event and make sure it runs just fine. 
That's cool. Um, one other thing that I that I want to touch on because I know that I, I I'd get some messages if I didn't ask this question. So um, so we talked about importing data. Is there going to be an easy way to export data for players? Because even even if you have your your stats in there, like there's a, a community built um, website called List Fortress. I don't know if you've heard of it, where um, where players have gone in and basically we make records of, of all the major tournaments and we, we input all the lists and all that in order to have a running um, data set of the progression of the meta, how that all goes. So mm -hmm. I, I, I know that you have a bunch of things on your plate, but I guess my first question is, do you have currently a way to output data? And second would be, if you don't, uh, does that seem like something that you would be able to do somehow in the future? Uh, we're always, always open to it and always, I mean, we, we build the app based on what the community needs. So um, if we have enough people asking for it, enough people wanting it, and that's what the community wants, we're, we're open to look at anything. I mean, it's the, we want to, I mean, we're gamers ourselves, all four of us that work on it. Um, we know, we, we want to listen to what people's feedback is and what people want. And if that's what people want, we're going to do what we need to do to, to support the community. That's really cool, man. I I love I love the uh, the way that you're going about running your business and understanding that you know it's right. It, it sounds a little cliche, but like by gamers for gamers, like that's yeah, that's really cool. Um, it's, is, I mean, you have to. I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's not. I mean, I, I still I still game. I still play in tournaments. I I mean, I I want to I want to use these tools myself. You know, so it's it's not just uh, it's not just trying to trying to shove something down someone's throat it's it's these are actually things that we want to use and things that we've seen that there's an opportunity to improve on and, and make things better and and make the experience better i mean it's it's gotten to the point now where uh for season 40 ktos using it most of them are playing in their own events if because they they're, they're either managing the the floor basically walk walk around the tables and just doing judge calls and not have to worry about paperwork at all or they're even able, able to play in their own events because they don't have to do anything. Players just submit the scores themselves, and the only thing they're really doing is hit and go at the end. That's cool, man. That I mean, if if you you guys got it that streamlined that you can play in an event and uh, and you know run pairing and stuff like that, that's awesome. Yeah. And and I think the uh, another just really convenient thing with the idea of being able to have you know pairings on your cell phone is you avoid that horde of people around the pairings board. Which is super nice, and not only that, uh, X-wing players. If you've ever been at these events, um, I've seen so many squad boxes and and like lists just get trashed accidentally. But like they fall on the floor, they catch an elbow, somebody turns around with their tournament kit. I mean, just the fact that we have access to this technology is going to save many many ships <laughs> thank you <Yep>. paul <laughs> it, it stops people from it definitely stops the uh, the wall huddles it stops and saves on paper again um it's it's kind of cool is it anytime you come into a new new environment with it uh you'll you'll see people kind of resistant to it at first and they kind of are don't want to do it round one then they see that they can put in the scores themselves and the, you know maybe their opponent helps them show them how to do that and then by round two i mean the to hits go on the on to hit the pairings for the next round and everyone looks at their phones and everyone goes off to the tables. There's no, no more, no one's asking to go look at the, uh, look at the paper on the wall. No, I mean, everyone just sees that it's online and how easy it is. And it's, it's, I mean, I've seen it happen enough that it just, it's like clockwork now. It's just like that first round is kind of a little bit of stumbling. The second round, it's everyone understands what they got to do. And it's just, it's hard to go back. I mean, I've, I've gone to tournaments now where they haven't used BCP and it's like, Oh man, I don't even really, <laughs> it's, how, it's so backwards you know it's just, what are it's you doing now, you, <laughs> you animals <laughs> <laughs> um and then my other question i guess i i didn't know i didn't catch that part you just said i can enter my score into the oh, yeah, yeah. into the app yeah so it's uh when you're when you're registering for the tournament uh actually i should say when you're checking in for the tournament so there's like two different phrases there registering is like if i buy a ticket online and uh I'm, I'm registered for the event then it shows up in my my recent events um and then when i'm actually there i can check in for the event so like for instance at, at pax we're going to be able to get all the players preloaded into it we haven't done this yet but um anyone who's got bought a ticket through cascade 
We're going to use their emails and uh, they'll be populated into the app. And then when they actually show up at the tournament, you actually can check in. So that actually means that you're actually there and you're ready to go. Um, it's within 24 hours and within the it's GPS coordinates because it's on your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, you're within the vicinity of, of the, the tournament. And uh, you select your faction at that point, And that's when your faction gets locked in. And then you, you create a self-scoring pin. And it's just a, it can be anything. It can be one letter. It can be one number. It can be a string of it. Whatever you want to do. But let's say you and I sit down and we have our, our game uh, game one. And uh, we, we go into the app there. We look at our pairings, tap submit results. And we... Uh, we both look at it. We only need one phone to do it. Uh, so again, if, if like you didn't have a smartphone or if you're one of the three people that has a BlackBerry. Um, <laughs> you know, you just threw some there. shade at somebody. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> listener. It's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Continue. But That's you, great. You, you verify the scores and then it asks for the self-scoring pin. So that way uh, we both put our pins in to make sure we both agree that's what the score is. And okay. So, uh, time out right there. I like that. I was That, that was going to be my next question. Like, can I cheat and say that I won every single game? So there, there is a way. There's a verification. I like yep. this. I like this. Can talk 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 more about that. So, so how how do I get my pin? Like how does that work? It's just when you, when you check in for the event, you just select the pin. It's a your pin's different every event, and uh, I, again, you just make it something as simple as just one number or one letter. I just I use four numbers for mine, and uh, just when we're done with the game, just type in the pin. You know put in the scores and then it asks both players for their pins and you just hand the phone back and forth and you're done. Don't you have to interact with the TO at all? Te- technically <laughs> you shouldn't even have to talk to the TO the entire time. If you do it right, you, can, you check in remotely, don't have to te- check in with the TO and then you score remotely. And that's, you don't even have to go to the scoring table at all. There's no paper. There's no printers. There's nothing. Man, sad TO doesn't get to interact <laughs> with the new. He just gets has to sit there and wait to hand out prizes. Well, you get to yeah, you get to do the fun parts. You get to worry about judging. You get to worry about uh, you know actually watching the games, which is always fun as a TO. You know, you get you get to do the good parts of being a TO. The the bad parts are doing all the scorekeeping and everything like that. You, no one wants to do that. That's not fun, you know. And, and it's uh it's all there for. It. I mean, the the players are doing it themselves. We're taking taking the load off the TO and letting them do the fun parts. It it's also allowing one one TO to run. You know, I, I've seen up to one TO run eighty people. So it's it's uh it, you, you don't need a huge huge uh, scoring staff to make this this work, and the the cool thing is you're not stuck with one data entry. I mean, as soon as the as soon as the results are done, you hit go and it's the next rounds up. You know, it's not like you're waiting for someone to put in, you know, to look at score sheets and put it in. And other other cool thing is, as a TO, it, it it's never fun to have uh, two players that say like, oh, you know what? It's actually it looks like you might have gotten our pairings wrong because uh, I actually won my last game, but it looks like you you paired me down. It's like, no, no, no. This is what the actual players put in. Mm-hmm. They're putting the scores in themselves. It's not on the TO at that point. So that's and, and there's a couple steps in the process to make sure that you're putting the right scores in. So it helps ensure that accuracy. It's not like written, scribbled on a piece of paper and then handed to a scoring person. And then you find out an hour later that, you know, the scores are off. It's like, no, it's right there. And you can see it online at any time to see what the scores were entered. Can I, if I, if I want to drop from an event, can I do that from the app too? Okay, sweet. I'm trying sure to think. Can. I'm trying to think if there's any if there's any any other questions. This if I think you guys have have really just nailed. I'm ex, I'm excited to use this, Paul. Like I am I am really, um, really excited. Um, it's been a it's been a long road for us to get here. You know, it's it's. I look at what we've uh, how we started off and how basic it was at at the get go to where we're at now, and um, it's it's we've covered almost everything. Um, in act, in fact, one of the things we just did in the last update too was since 2.0 has uh, changed the changed the points total, we made it so that for X-wing events you can actually change your points value, so adjust your your MOV correctly. Uh, mm-hmm. So say if you want to have an epic game or whatnot, you can actually put 500 points in, and it'll calculate the the MOV off of that instead of 200. Okay, and so and just for for X-wing players, so when when we're submitting a score, do are we just typing in points destroyed? I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And okay, then and then it it'll, 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 it'll figure out the MOV, strength of schedule, all that, yep. all on its own. Okay. And then all, it also, if you ever want to see what the tiebreakers are and how you got to where you're placed at, uh, you can, from the roster screen, you can click on the player's name and see their path to victory and the tiebreakers, how they broke down, how it got them to where they're at, and then see their opponents listed in that little window also. And then it's, if you're in pods, it'll also show your your pods that you're in from that point also. 
that's this is, this thing sounds super versatile. All, all <laughs> it can do all the things. What, what what can it not do? All right, so um, I'm trying to think. I just had a, a question. <laughs> can you, and I, can I you forgot. clarify that uh, that one more time? So say I uh, tabled Geom. Mm -hmm. uh, I took all of his points. He didn't get any of mine. In uh, a full game, I would take all 200 of his points. Mm -hmm. um, but my MOV would be 400. What yep. would I enter into the scoring then? You'd put in 200 to zero. Okay, perfect. And it, it will figure out the, the it, it automatically will adjust on the back end to, to show you the correct margin of victory. So like if, uh, I'm, I'm going to be bad at the math here because it's a little different for me as to, but if I got like 150 and you got 50, uh, my MOV would then be 350. Is that right? And then yours would be uh, 150. Am I doing that right? It, it, no, it, it the, calculates it, on the back end. Yeah, right? it, it'll, <laughs> it'll always equal 400. Um, yeah. yeah. So, man, this is... I, this I, have, is really a, cool. I have one other question. Actually, the uh, from listening to you and playing around with the app a little bit earlier, uh, I'm super impressed. Uh, you guys have almost thought of uh everything um the only the only thing i could uh think of is so because we're trying to kind of eliminate not trying to but trying to eliminate the uh interaction with the judges and things is there a way to find out when the round starts i see when the event starts that's the push notifications so it, it as of right now uh as of this weekend uh, it it only the, there's a push notification that comes out when the round starts. Um, oh, nice. that, that was one of the things that uh, the Cascade wanted uh, because of like the hangar bays and stuff like that. You know, like little small eight man tournaments that would be going off at different times. Um, so you're not sitting around waiting for everyone to to get together. Um, something we wanted to do, we just kind of jumped it to the front of the line. So as of right now, it's it's just round one, but uh, we're going to make it so that the the TO can select different times. Like so, if you wanted to have like a, a push notification when you got 15 minutes left in the round, or if you wanted to have it so it, it does push notifications when every round starts, um, it'll, it'll be able to do all that. We just we just just got it in there, so we it's kind of one of those brand new toys we have, so we just got to figure out what all we want to make it do. But yeah, as of right now, it's only round one. But I mean, another thing is you, you can always go into the pairings menu on the player app and and check the pairing, see where see where the rounds at at any time. Um, so if, even if uh, it's not going to hurt it. You can hit refresh as many times as you want. <laughs> and just and when parents go live, I mean, it's, it's, you can't get the scramble. When when people see that the parents are up, everyone kind of pulls out their phones and starts looking for their table number. Um, so you can kind of watch the movement of the people. But shortly, it will be set up with the, the push notifications to let you know. So you don't have to worry about even looking around anymore. Hmm. Um, is there a, an, a, a live leaderboard that I can look at in the app? Yep, you can go to placings at any time and, and see the placings. Okay, cool. And then we, I mean, we do have overall, um, there is a ranking system we have set up with BCP rankings. And so you can actually see how people are, are scaling globally, oh. uh, not just at the current event. But um, yeah, you can see placings at any time. And we also made it so, I mean, we try to make it so that the TO can adjust it to wherever they want. Like you can actually, if you wanted to hide the list, you can hide the list so people can't see the list till after the tournament ends. Um, you can hide the placings so placings aren't aren't viewable till you turn it back on um, or the event ends. Uh, I mean, we try, try to give the functionality so the TO has all the tools they could possibly want in different edge cases for different types of tournaments and things. So is, is there... It sounds like it might be there already. So is there a way, so like I'm actively in a tournament, my pairing goes up, I see I'm playing uh, I'm playing Will Haywood, and I could like click on his name or somehow find what he's playing as I'm getting ready for that game? Yep, you can look at his list, as, assuming he submitted his list, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to see everything he has. That and is cool. uh, eventually we'll have full-on breakdowns of what that list has because we'll be able to read the list and kind of give you an uh, analyst. Uh, Kind of like a, a top level overview of what the list has, and eventually you'll be even get able, be able to get into uh, drilling down and see his previous opponents and all that kind of stuff. But that's that's a little bit in the future. But the player app, we we have a lot of really cool stuff lined up for the player app and and what we can dive into with it. That 
that sounds awesome. Um, I'm going to take a sec here. Anybody who's watching live, if you have a question for Paul, feel free to go ahead and put it in the chat while we still have him here. Um, yeah, Paul, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm super impressed. It just sounds like you guys have really taken the time to, to cultivate this. Some people I have seen in the chat like, oh, yeah, I've seen that or I've tried that or used that in my, my local area. So um, I'm excited to see how this expands in the X-Wing community at large. And uh, hopefully it, it catches on because if just the more technology that we can integrate and just make things easier for everybody, I think it's just going to make – let gaming time be gaming time, not sitting around waiting for, uh, you know, a around a, a piece of paper and filling out yep. match slips. And I forgot a pen. Oh, my God. Can you, I cannot tell you how many times I haven't had a pen at an event, but I always have my phone in my pocket. <laughs> and we're pretty low on, on the data usage and the battery consumption. So it's it's not like it's going to be tearing up your battery. I mean – if, if you have a phone that's basically been made in the last three years, your battery should be good to last you the entire time. And um, it's it, it, we didn't want it to be a drain on your experience for you. I mean, um, yeah, it's and you're, you're right. You don't want to worry about having to have a pen and paper to, to track things or anything like that. It's just it's all it's all digital. I mean, it's just I, the, the catchphrase I tried to tried to kind of go with for a while. People kind of shot me down on it was uh, digital solutions for analog games. But it's uh it really is what it is it's it's bringing that that next level interface to the the competitive scene and i i I'd, I'd be remiss if i didn't say that bcp is one of the things that's helped the 40k community grow um i mean let's let's put it like this that first lvo which is the las vegas open um there was 180 players and that one well, shouldn't say that was first that was the third lvo um and this year we're they're expecting 880 so that was just three years ago. So I'd, I'd love to see the X-Wing community growing to have massive events like that too. I mean, we want to be, you know, there's there's no reason why our games shouldn't be rivaling the attendance levels that Magic sees, you know? Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think, you know, if, if the X-Wing community can rally around the usage of this app, I'm sure it's going to make you guys real happy. But, um, like, just if, if we can rally around it, I think, it just it, it'll increase X-wing visibility overall because it'll start to be centralized in a in a in a certain location, and uh, if we can just say, hey guys, just just use just use this, um, and it works, so that people will be happy. Yes, <laughs> and there's no barrier of entry to a to a TO. So a, a TO, I mean, anyone who wants to run a tournament can, and it's it's all free too. So there's no there's no paywall blocking it. There's nothing stopping you. No special code you need to get into it. Anyone can go into their their local gaming group or local game store and, and set up a tournament and, and run their tournament just fine. It's, it's, we've tried to be thorough in making uh, tutorials. We have some video tutorials up there on how to run different parts of the uh, app. I mean, from the TO app or the player app. And um, we want to make it easy for anyone to, to have that experience. The same, same thing I had when, when Garrett first made the app for me, I didn't know how to run a tournament. He, you know, the app came out for, because of that. We want anyone to be able to pick it up and, and, you know, after running through a test event, be able to run a, a whatever size event they want to and and do it successfully. All right, so a couple of, couple of questions here from uh, some of our live viewers. So um, will the BCP app make it easier for novice TOs to run solid tournaments, and can this help build the scene? I 100% think so. I think it's uh, – if uh, – if you've had any issues trying to run a tournament before or have had questions about how to do it, it's, I mean, it's, it makes it pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's as easy as going in there. And one of the things I like to do, and I'm glad she's not watching, but I love, love to put uh, the app in my wife's hands and tell her to run a tournament. And uh, <laughs> it's no matter what game system it is, she's, she's able to, to figure it out just by, by, I mean, once you kind of get the general idea of how a tournament's supposed to run, uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's, yeah, it's, I think a novice TO can pick it up and, and run a tournament very easily. And again, I always encourage someone to, to run a test event. Um, just throw some some fake names in there and and just give it a give it a roll and see how it uh, how it works and and then go go through and do it live after that. Awesome. Uh, next question here is saying this is probably a little specific, but um, when it comes to list breakdowns, um, can you see what how do you say here? I'm, can you see points breakdowns of each ship in the list? Are there thresholds for half points? 
period. It Question just mark. depends on how the lists are, are submitted into the system. Um, again, right now we just have it set up for the uh, the FFG app. So whatever the FFG app is is showing in list building, which I think is uh, it's the full breakdown of the ship, the pilots, and then the upgrades, and then the points associated with it. We can break out the points, and I think one of the things we had set up for the analytics on it was going to be uh, average uh, points uh, spent on upgrades per ship. Um, so yeah, as, as long as it's depending on what list builder we're, we're working with to pull the information out of, uh, it just depends on what they present, but assuming it's there, we can, we can pull it and compile it. All right. Next question here is, uh, saying maybe I missed it, but if someone doesn't have a smartphone, are they still able to submit their information to the TO? Yeah. So it's, it's you can always go to the TO app. Uh, TO app always has master control and can always submit anyone's scores. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, it's it's also you only need one smartphone. So if, if you are someone who doesn't have a smartphone, you have a an old razor or something like that. It's if but if your opponent has a smartphone, it's only one device that's needed to score. But yes, you're always able to go back through and uh, and just do it with the TO. So to ask, dive a little more deep into that. So let's say I'm the only person within eight people that has a smartphone. Could we all put in our things from my phone? Does that yeah. does that work? Yep, because it's it only you guys are gonna know your pin. So yeah, you can you can just go ahead and pass the phone down the line, and and everyone can can enter their scores on it. There you go. So when I'm streaming, guys, if you don't have a smartphone, come on over. I'll help you guys out. Uh, I'll have my phone with me. <laughs> uh, the to tos will usually have their their there iPads or or phones around so they can they can score for you too. I know I know Cascade's got a, a decent stack of iPads uh, that are gonna be bringing with them to pack so they can they can do score entry on there too. That is awesome, man. Well, is you know, as we wrap this up, is there anything else that you want to talk about here when it comes to best coast pairings? Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, really, no. I'm just excited to be working uh, with the X-wing community. Um, I'm a lifelong Star Wars fan, and uh, I've I've watched uh, X-wing grow and and seen. I, I mean, I've I've stopped by my local store and watched the tournaments a couple times, and I'm just uh, I'm excited to to finally be getting in with the X-Wing community and, and I really want to see what we can do to, uh, to, to bring the tools we have to this community and what you guys do with it. Fantastic, Paul. Well, I want to say thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, it's been awesome. I'm super excited to download this and uh, listeners and viewers. Uh, I did talk to Paul and I'm going to be asking him some questions off the air. I'm going to try to work on a video just to, to show really clearly on how all of this works uh, for the X-Wing community. Probably do what you said, Paul, and make like a test event just to kind of show uh, the flow and how that all goes. And um, well, I just want I want to help you guys get this information out. That way, uh, you know, day one of, of launch that packs and th that it, it it runs smoothly. Well, and I, I really thank you for uh, taking the time to have me on here and uh, letting me uh, have a little soapbox on your show. And yeah, I'm I'm really excited. I, and I, I'll be at PAX too. So uh, if anyone wants to come by and ask me questions on the spot, there I might might be a little busy because I'll be I'll be making sure that everything runs smoothly. But uh, me and one of the other developers will be there and. Uh, Love to talk to you and, and hear your ideas on and feedback on what what you've uh, what you've seen so far. All right, fantastic. Well, you can go ahead and uh, hang up in the call, my friend. Uh, it was nice to talk to you, and I will see you at PAX. Thank you, Paul. All righty, that's some good information there, Will. That's some cool uh, I'm, stuff. I'm blown away. Uh, it's it's literally everything we've been asking for. Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't believe like <laughs> there's, uh, there's, I definitely said it like the moment they said there's going to be an app, I was like, oh my God, please, please let it do all these things. And guess what? Uh, while the FFG app isn't going to be able to do it, uh, BCP can. And that's great. That's the best news ever. Yeah, <laughs> best coast pairs. Like, we got this. We we can. We oh can yeah, do it. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm blown away that they've been already. Like, it's already a thing. It's not like yeah. we have to wait for it or anything. And it's already working. I'm super excited. So hopefully that. Um, I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm pumped. Alrighty. So uh, we'll we'll continue here.
that went a little longer than I was expecting in our in our in our timeline. So we're gonna we're gonna have to pick up the pace a little bit to keep schedule. But um, let's get going. So uh, last week, FFG dropped information on the Clone Wars era ships, and um, today we're covering the Galactic Republic. But usually, do you only see separatist ships in the corner? Yes, I am. I have them in the corner there because we're not talking about them today. I just wanted to. Sh if you didn't see them, this is what they look like. Super exciting. It'll be really awesome. pretty cool. They look really cool. And um, we're going to hit those next week uh, because I have a bunch of really extensive notes on the Galactic Republic. So we're going to spend some time on that and hit the A-Wing next. So, um, Will, I mean, you know, I, I recorded a whole like 25 minute video. Maybe was it 20? I don't even know. I, I know that I spent a ridiculous amount of time on it. So my my reference for actually how long the video it is is really uh, messed up. What are, what are some highlights that you are getting from the Galactic Republic? What's got you pumped? What do you think is cool in there, man? Uh, man, uh, Force users in the little starfighters, um, the different configurations on the starfighter. I think that's what uh, originally. I was worried about because there there always has been two kind of variations of that uh, of the delta frame and seeing that there's a configuration that allows you to customize the kind of base of the ship uh, whether you want it more of a, a tankier fighter like an x-wing more kind of a light fighter like an a-wing uh, is super interesting to me and it should have lots of versatility yeah, man. So um, I have so many notes here. I'm like overwhelmed with what we should talk about <laughs> on, like, on the podcast because I talk talk so much about this. Uh, but let's go ahead, just hit some of the some of the broad strokes. So the Galactic Republic is getting three different ships to start out with. So is the so are the separatists. So the three ships for the Galactic Republic are the Delta Seven, the uh, VT nineteen Torrent. And the Arc 170. I figure. Um, let's see. I want to double check what I have here available. We should probably talk talk about the Delta Seven first, right? That that's the one that most people are are pumped about. Yeah, it's probably the most iconic. Um, it's what everybody remembers from the movies, anyways, or the TV show. They fly it a couple times in the TV show. Yeah, man. Um, it's 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 just it's such a cool iconic ship, and just the being able to see, um, you know, <laughs> see this on the table has got me really excited. I know that there are some people who are not super pumped about prequel era content, but this creates a niche, I think, for people who didn't get into X Wing because maybe they they really like the clone, especially you know p people who are fans of the Clone Wars cartoon series. Like, if you don't like the the prequel movies, like, if you watch the entirety of the the cartoon Clone Wars, I think you'll, you'll at least like that. Because there's some really cool stuff that happens in there. Some really great character development. And now we get to play the Clone Wars live. Oh, man, they're, they're bringing it back, too, uh, yep. for a, a final season or two yep. on their streaming service. I'm mm -hmm. super pumped about that. Should be uh, pretty they, cool. They definitely left it on like a cliffhanger. Yeah. So let's uh let's talk about let me scrolling scrolling scrolling. Let's talk about this Delta Seven dial, man. This dial is ridiculous. It's so good. It has all the moves. Not really all the moves. A lot of the moves. So um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed really? that it does not have blue hard twos. Um, because of its pilot or its ship ability, uh, if you execute a maneuver, you may spend one force charge to perform a boost or barrel roll action. Yep. Uh, I really want to be able to utilize those K turns and sloops and effectively clear the stress so I can keep doing those uh, special actions afterwards. I guess for, for me, the way I look at it is, you know, a one bank plus spend the charge and boost is essentially a too hard, right? Uh, if, mm, if you if you I want, guess that's that's fair. Uh, do we? Um, 
Do these ships have any linked actions outside of their ship ability? No linked actions, at least not that not that we can see. You know, enhance. I didn't see anything there from the uh, from the ship cards. No. no, no linked actions. Essentially, they're linked actions, very similar to the A wing, right? Where the there's no linked, but you oh, can do this additional action That's with fair. their with their ship ability. So basically, okay. you can always link into a booster barrel if you spend the force, if and only. Yeah, that that is interesting. I I do like uh the the multiple ways to turn around, and I I guess uh I got to get out of the thinking of um that you're stress self stressing your ship a lot with this, mm -hmm. um because you are just using the force. Yep. So it should allow it to uh, sloop and K-turn more often. Yeah. I, I guess that's why I want more greens on it or blues. Yeah. It feel it feels that way, but yeah, you can do you can do a hard one boost in that same direction every turn if you want to. You just do this and wee. and still pick up a focus or an evade yeah. target lock. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's super maneuverable. I think you're right. Like it you we naturally think oh push the limit. We need more. Um, we need more blues, but not not so much. Um, like it it is it, it's gonna move all over the place. Yeah, that it's just gonna be a different way instead of that uh balancing when you stress yourself. Uh, it's just gonna be managing that force economy the entire game. I think that's mm -hmm. that's gonna be that's gonna make it a very distinct ship in my opinion. Yeah, and you know. It'll be interesting to see how many force each of these pilots have because, like, I'm expecting, like, right, Anakin should have three. Obi-Wan Kenobi should have three. But the Jedi Knight, if you zoom in, you see that it only has one. There's only one force available to it. So that ship is going to have to use that force really differently than someone like Anakin. I mean, Anakin and Obi-Wan are council members. So, geez, I hope they have three. But just because you're on the council doesn't mean you're a master. I didn't say there are masters. <laughs> <laughs> I would just I would just remind the people. Just reminding <laughs> the people. Know your canon, okay? Oh man. <laughs> Prequel memes. Love them. Love them. Alright. Yeah, so Delta 7, it just it looks really cool. Um as for pilots, um, you know, we thank you, hide and seek, for your, your subscription. Um as for pilots, so we're 100% getting Obi-Wan Kenobi, and we talked about the generic Jedi Knight. Um, but th in the – so there's a new package, right? It's called the Squad Pack that uh, that has that other ship in it, the – Torrent. Uh, the Torrent, right? Uh, in that one, there's three pilots that we don't know what they are. Like the quality of the image is, is not that great, so it's really hard to make out those letters. I'm hoping it's Kit Fisto, Plo Koon, and Kieti Mundi. I'm hoping that's what those three are because those three are they're just they're just boss Jedi, like they're really really cool. And we see them actually flying those ships uh, in the Clone Wars TV show, and um, we see them also in the in uh, Revenge of the Sith. At least we I think it's who's who gets blown up. I think it's Kieti Mundi. He's like in his in his fighter. And he no, gets turned on. Which uh, one is it? Kid Mundi dies on Megito. Oh, okay, and so then it must Kit, be. I think Kit Fisto dies in the spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> uh, he dies in Palpatine's chamber. So okay, so that who does that leave? That leaves uh, um, Plo Koon. Plo Koon. Yeah, just Plo Koon, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I I'm hoping it's those three. Um, as for the Delta Seven expansion pack, the separate expansion pack, which, by the way, the uh, the the one with the squad pack where you get the torrents is painted up like Obi Wan's uh, Delta Seven, and then the Anakin paint is in the separate expansion. And in there, we know all the pilots. I was able to enhance enough to see them all, and we got um, a copy of the Jedi Knight. We got Ahsoka, uh, Barris Afi, Luminara, Unduli, and Anakin Skywalker. So, a bunch of really cool Jedi. And you know, you know, one thing that we have to talk about is each of these Jedi like had their own starfighter painted a certain way. I'm excited to see all the repaints. Like, I think they're going to be really cool. That's going to be a big thing. I know I'm, I'm going to commission some. But like, can you paint this one up like this and this one up like this? Like, Jedi starfighter swarm. You won't really be able to fly swarm. <laughs> swarm. I, I think how many? How that. many? Do, how many of these do you think you could fit in the list? 
Ooh, so you were saying a naked Jedi Knight? Yeah. I would say with like the base uh, chassis, no, none of the crazy modifications or whatever that make it better. I would say it has to be 34 points okay. so that you can't fit a sixth one in. Maybe five. I, I would say easy. I would imagine five extremely base models. Um, but no more than that. All right, all right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think that sounds a little cheap, though. That sounds cheap. I like they got the force, but I guess Have it's only stat line. I guess it, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they don't even have three attack normally, so yeah, we're, you're right. we're looking at about an A-Wing. Actually, it, it seems closer to an M3A Interceptor, which uh, which you can heavily modify. So, And there are 33 points, so you're allowed to put six in a list, which is not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would, yeah, I would say under 40, I would hope for the Jedi Knight. Okay. Um, be, in the most basic of configurations. Yeah. And I mean, it, 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 even if the Jedi Knight starts that low, like, it, that's going to scale so fast. Like, it's going <laughs> to. Anakin, you know, you're not going to be able to fit, like, you know, Anakin and Obi Wan and another one. I doubt you'd be able to fit, like, three of the highest initiative ones in, in here. No. I would put Anakin and Obi Wan around the 50 point mark. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, about. Actually, I think Inquisitor, the Grand Inquisitor, might be mm -hmm. the best comparison for these. The TIE Advanced Prototype V1s yeah, uh, might be the best comparisons because they, they also have a generic uh, Force user. Yeah, that's very true. It's very very similar uh, stat line and, and platform. Hmm. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. And uh, in the squad pack, let's go ahead and talk about the... The torrent, oh, the V19 uh, be torrent. Before before we dive uh, yep. dive deep into the torrent, yep. I love these squad packs. By the way, we had discussed about uh, a, po a possibility of like a fact or a, an era based core set. Yep. And this idea is way better. Yeah. Uh, so much more content, um, mm -hmm. and it's a specific the the faction you want to play. Um, it looks amazing. Yeah, and but they yes. they even they even said that in the article, right? It's like you get your core set basically to get your components, plus this, boom, you're ready to play. And in in there, there's you have your a slew of generic upgrades, basically what you would have gotten, uh, what it sounds like, what you would have gotten in the conversion kits, plus mm -hmm. oh, plus your 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 core set gives you a full, I mean not a full, but at least an extensive library of the generic upgrades. We're we're assuming I everybody watching live look at that middle uh, talent card. Uh, that's the stack of cards that comes with it. Yep, that's that's a thick stack. Thick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you got the, you have you have that stack, and I think it's most likely because usually in these in these spreads, this is everything you're getting. So you have the stack of cards plus that line of cards that's on the on the other side. So it's it's even a higher stack than what we see um, all together. But, yeah, it should be a pretty – like like you said, Will, this squad pack is just a great idea. You have a very compact way to deliver a faction to somebody and say, here you go. Now, with that, I'm curious to know – You know, they put three ships in the squad pack, which I like. I like that there's three ships in one box. With just this box, can I make a 200-point squad? That's what I want to know because I think in order to really be be a pack that I can just core set plus this, I have to be able to make a 200-point squad, which I think can give us some clues as to the cost of some of these ships because if with three of them, we should be able to get to 200. So rough estimate there, um, you can get – currently, you can get Luke and Vader – for both force users and both have decent platforms, uh, you can easily get them both up to about a hundred points. So even if uh, you're under that, say ninety, right? Mm -hmm. You only need to find a uh, fifty-five point wingman next to them, and that seems reasonable, right? Like the oh, yeah. the highest, 
Obi-Wan and the two highest torrents uh, loaded down, of course, but uh, it seems possible. Mm -hmm. I think they would be on your line of thinking of like, we need to be able to make this. Not only, I think that's why there's so many cards probably is that not only does it need to be able to field a list should be able to field multiple 200 point lists. Agreed. Agreed. So uh, V19 Torrent is uh, is that little ship you, can, you guys can't see. It's the one in the corner. The one that looks different. <laughs> it's uh, what is that kind of shape like? It's like a like a like a number three upside down and a cockpit on top of it. It's an interesting little ship. Um, but yeah, it looks looks like an interesting fighter here. I want to talk about the stat okay. line first. I think we're gonna I'm gonna nickname it the T wing. The T wing. That's that's right. Do you think those wings move on that thing? Oh man, that'd be cool. But this this is what's gotten me. All these models, except for the Ark, uh, are extremely small. Yeah. Uh, they're so small. Uh, so I, I'm excited to actually see them in person and see the, the actual scale of them. Like, we can imagine, sure, but they look incredibly small. Yeah. Oh, it also could be the M-Wing. Some people are calling it the M-Wing. The Morales Wing! Ah! The Morales wing. <laughs> Got it. Or the W-Wing for when you win. It's not a, it's not a V-Wing. That's something different. Don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. So uh stat line here is two front attack dice, two agility, five hull. Uh focus, evade, lock, and then lock uh linked into evade, I believe, from from zooming in. I could have to have mm -hmm. that wrong, but uh I think that's what I saw there. And um I'm having the two attack dice, like it's kind of it's a it's a Z ninety five with some extra hull strapped on. And more action options. It's kind of the way I looked at it. I, I would think two shields is worth five hull. So these shouldn't be much. Well, they also get the evade though too. So mm -hmm. just a little bit better than a Z95 stat line. Yeah. So that the, the five hull is harsh though. Uh, could use a shield or two. <laughs> shield, please I, hook me. I've up. been playing. I've been playing quad jumpers, man. Now the first two. Uh, crits coming in. I'm um, gonna ruin your whole ship. So <laughs> they, I feel like they're gonna be cheap. Yep. Um, what? Got any theories on like their special abilities or anything? I got nothing, man. I can't see anything. Like, I try. I stared at that screen for hours. <laughs> like, I'm like, all right. I, 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 have no I know you don't know anything. So I mean, I would imagine that they probably have like. If those we know that in canon those wings move, so I would mm -hmm. say that their maybe their ship ability if they have one has something to do with those wings opening and closing, like maybe. I, that yeah. that's my best. That's the best guess I have. So like they can. Well, I guess I guess my question is, uh, do they even have a ship ability? Maybe not. I know that they're saying in the article that they are ordnance carriers, like missiles. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I was wondering if those cluster missiles in that spread uh, are for the torrents or the deltas. Because uh, I don't think the deltas have missiles. Maybe not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that that would uh, equate them to what we were, the comparison we were immediately going for, which was the Z95. Because mm -hmm. uh, you were going to need... Uh, for a lot of fights, more than two attack power. Oh, uh, which is, yeah. And yeah, with five health, you can survive at least a shot to come in and take your target lock. At least one. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have to roll back because we actually mixed something. We didn't talk about the stats for the Delta 7. So we're going to roll back here. And okay. um, well, that was that was basically it for the torrent. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we don't we don't we really don't. Okay, all right. Um, well, let's go back to the delta. Delta seven. So we have two attack dice in the front, three agility, three hull, one shield. Force is dependent on which force user. And what I want to talk about here are the actions. So it has focus, evade, lock, barrel, roll, boost. Um, but the evade is purple. It's time to speculate. It's time to speculate. What what so in the in the um, in the Grand Republic video I I took a guess and I was like well we know that um, 
you know, with like red actions, it costs you a stress. You have to take a, this negative effect in order to do this to do a red action. Uh, my guess is that you have to spend a force to do this action. What do you, what what do you think, Will? You agree? Disagree? Yeah. Another another option? No, that's that's a hundred percent what it is, and. The, uh, mathematically, that's an interesting option because the evade token uh, can change a blank dice on defense, whereas the force dice could change a focus result on offense or defense. So while you're committing the force to your defense, it does become a guaranteed result. Plus, if you, say, uh, have three force, you boosted uh, with your force, and you evaded with your force and you still have a, a blank and a focus modifier on defense then which you'll burn through all your force extremely quickly but uh it gives you plenty of options for it so yeah i, I think uh it, it's 100 percent. you have to spend a force to do purple actions which i think is super cool i'm ready for orange actions uh, teal actions, <laughs> whatever. Uh, that's, All the that's, such a, that's such a great design space, and yeah. I'm, I'm excited that they're already already jumping into it. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, when they started the whole red action thing, I had not even considered that they could use different colors, which is such a such a simple idea, guys. Let's just change the color and make it do a thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Orange. I think orange it's awesome. gives you a tractor beam. Yellow gives you an ion. Yeah. Or no, I guess ion's still orange. But you know, they can come you up see with what something. I'm getting at. Yeah, absolutely. They can come up Ooh, with something. A blue action cloaks you, oh. or you got to spend your cloak to do the blue action, or spend the shield. Ooh, oof. yeah, That's... I know that better be a good action. You, you, <laughs> yeah, but... you, you, you using uh, that action, okay. this better win you the game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it's it's so cool. I know I was, some of the suggestions I saw, like comments in the video. Um, where like maybe it gives you a force, but I think, ah, man, like, no, like I think that's... that that sounds way too good. Like, why wouldn't you evade then if it's gonna give you force, right? That's kind of my thought there. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah. Like I said, ma mathematically, uh, it's that whole weapons guidance. Spend your focus to change a a blank mm -hmm. instead of an eyeball. Like it, it's guaranteeing you a result, and that invests it that investment in itself is worth something mm -hmm. though agree. you've already committed to it you lose your versatility but yep. uh should make them very dodgy in there um at three agility yeah let's talk about some of the upgrade cards that we can see like the ones that ffg gave us so one of them which is uh being being debated here um is calibrated laser targeting. It says while you perform a primary attack, if the defender is in your bullseye, add a focus result. I think that's a, that sounds like a pretty solid card, right? I mean, if you have a force to just make that card say add a hit. Yep. Uh, that's that's how I. That's immediately what I see is yeah. have them in your bullseye, spend a force, and it adds a hit. Kind of like um, uh, old school Nora. Mm -hmm. From first edition, right? Where she would add the focus result. Yeah, um, I'm... makes sense. That, that's that's an interesting card that it it takes up two slots, two different slots, which I think is the first of the, its kind. Yeah, configuration and modification. There must be there might be something really cool in the pack that they're trying. Um, there there's a combo there that I think they're trying to lock out. Like mm -hmm. you can't take this as well. Whatever. Whatever that may be. Maybe actually what they're trying to lock out, which I think maybe is a good transition, is the the other Delta 7 configuration. Oh, okay. Where, where So they don't want you to be able to throw three attack dice plus this focus. Oh, sure. I, I think it's more interesting that it takes up your modification slot. You know what it is? It's so you can't add a shield or hull upgrade to that model. Okay. Yeah. Makes so sense. So it keeps it at four health. That would, that would make sense to me. Uh, so what's the the delta B? Because uh, we just went over the that was targeting. Uh, yep. 
the so integrated right, targeting. Yeah, so Delta, the Delta Seven B uh, says it doesn't really. It has a bunch of flavor text on it, and basically just gives you three stat changes. It shows a front arc. It says plus one. So you get plus one attack dice, you get minus one agility, and you get two plus shield. So now you become more, like you said earlier, Will, like more of like an X-Wing, more of a brawler of a ship. Mm -hmm. Brawler, jouster. Yep. Mm -hmm. That seems really interesting. I'm curious to know what – do you think it's going to cost you more points to have that configuration, or is it going to be the same across? What do you think? What? Yeah. I, mean, should, uh, I, I think it should. <laughs> let, me, let me put that yeah. on there. I think it should. I mean, negative one agility, if we're going from three to two, you're losing out on a third of a chance to block a hit, and you're gaining two guaranteed blocks of hits. Um, and and in addition to that, which I think, honestly, if it just said lose agility, gain two shields, it would be worth something. But in addition to that, it gives you a three uh, die attack. Uh, I don't know how to estimate it in second edition terms, but it's got to be a ten points at least. Yeah, I mean, has to it has to be good. We red dice are good, <laughs> right? Just just straight uh, yeah, up adding a dice is good. Yeah, uh, yeah, because you don't have the bullseye restriction um, to get the possible extra hit, um, and like I can't get over the the two extra health that would put it up to five. Uh, three and three, is that right? Yep. That's pretty good. Six health on two agility. Um, yeah, it's exactly what it, an X wing looks like. Yeah, that's... And they're good, apparently. <laughs> Some people say so. <laughs> not, not bad. But is it as good as wedge? <laughs> I don't know. You're gonna uh, maybe. Man. Oh. They need to get better resolution. I, I do like how uh, every, uh, what do I want to say? Every pilot has a unique ability to use the force. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see what those kind of combinations of how you want to use the force in your uh, flight patterns. It'll yeah. Be pretty I've... cool. It, it should keep them each individually very unique. Yeah. And, and just interesting, right? Uh, it's, oh, yeah. I'm super excited. Another force upgrade that we got, a new one here, is Brilliant Evasion. And it has been a little bit of a hot button topic. Hot button topic. I got a little, really, really, little, little bit of uh, elbowing for, uh, for my opinion in the video. And I just want to get your opinion, Will. And then we'll discuss a little bit. It's Brilliant Evasion is the name of the card. And it says, while you defend... If you are not in the atti attacker's bullseye firing arc, you may spend one force to change two of your eyeball results to an evade result. So I know the – you, you go first. Sorry. You go first. Do your thing. Um, mathematically, it's not very good unless people are causing you to like, – like juke. Unless, unless someone's actively juking you or you're actively adding focus results to your green dice, uh, it's not very good. Um, uh, it's a nice, like, buffer to be like, uh, to keep your, what do I want to say? To keep your force economy in check, it is nice in that aspect. I personally can't expect this card to cost very much. Right. So... In the video, I say that I like it. I do like it, mostly because because it is a three agility ship. This might come up more often than not. And if it's cheap, I'm assuming that it's cheap. Because right now, when it comes to force upgrades, it's like you either use supernatural reflexes or you use nothing. This seems like an actual, assuming that, again, we know nothing about price, all, all things considered. But if it is, uh, if it's cheap... This might be something that actually can get used. Because if you're taking range three shots, um, shots through obstacles, like this is something where you can get that extra value out of your force. And these pilots, they're going to need, like you talked about earlier, Will, the force economy. Mm -hmm. it, and if I can maximize that force economy some way and it doesn't cost me too many points in my list, um, 
and I'm and I'm trying to run multiple force users or trying to squeeze out every single point, and I and I don't have I can't afford supernatural reflexes. I think this is the first other um, force upgrade that I'm going to be looking at. So I, I think it has some in in value, uh, like I said, because it it prevents you from just draining all your force, or or basically, um, who I like this on is the Jedi Knights. Because they only have one force, you can use you you just be able to modify all those uh, focus results on defense. Um, but I have a I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, comparing it to uh, a reasonable, <laughs> uh, reasonably priced force asset, heightened perception. Uh, you engage at pilot skill seven by spending a force charge mm -hmm. that uh, while it's not a dice modifier um, still uses the force, mm -hmm. but it costs just three points in your opinion. Does this uh, uh, brilliant evasion, should it cost more or less than heightened perception? That is a good question. Putting me on the spot. Hmm. Well, you said you liked it. I did. I did say I liked it. I got to put my money where my mouth is. Um. Well, let's see. I mean, if heightened perception is, you said three points. Three points. Currently, three points, and you can do that every turn, no matter what. You get to shoot before everybody else. Um. Then I guess my assessment would be that it has to be either it has to be two or three points. Um. Three at three, I think it's playable. At two, uh, it's value, I think, for okay. for it. I would uh, I would guess two, but um, I could see the the argument for them costing the same because they do 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 two different things. Mm -hmm. um, is that the only force upgrade uh, currently spoiled? Yeah, the only only one we can see right now. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yet. Well, I have to come back to that. Uh, I guess when we know what's points. Yeah. Turns out. All right. Well, next thing I'm super excited to talk about is it, do you if you haven't looked at it in the article, they show these red, what look like clouds, in the spread for this squad Dion, pack. Dion, they don't look like clouds. They look like nebulas. Nebulas. <laughs> Like, that's a good word. <laughs> Nebulas. Um, what What do you think this is? Like, what What are we looking at? Do we have new obstacles, Will? What do you think? Um, or is that like a mission piece or something? So that That was right where my my mind went. Is are we gonna get missions back? Uh, because we don't have any second edition missions except for escalation currently. Uh, so I think it could go either way. Um, it would be cool to get new obstacles. Oh, you know what? Uh, as, as I say that, if I am correct, both, uh, boxes contain those exact three mm -hmm. tokens. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think we're getting obstacles. new obstacles. They're obstacles. Call, called it obstacles, nebulas. Uh, what they do, um, I don't know. All right, so uh, he, he, here's my prediction. Can I give it? Can I give it to you? Sure. Can yeah. I give it to you? So, um, if you if you know what, I'm gonna see. Uh, I I'm gonna end up breaking my 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 streamy thing, but let's see. It's this is fine. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, where is that? Okay, I'm gonna unlock this. All right, guys. So if you're watching at home, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. Zoom in some more to this picture. So if so there's oh, there's a cloud. Look at them. I, I'm I'm looking. Uh, uh, I'm Are you looking, looking at the red tokens? Huh? I'm looking at the red tokens. That weird token. If you look at it really closely, man, does it? That looks awfully like a red evade arrow. It looks like a stylized red evade arrow. Not not the uh, not the like evade token, but your agility. Sorry, I said evade. Your agility mm. arrow. So he not around to something. So, I, I'm I'm on board 100. percent I see where you're going. With you see this. where I'm going. You see where I'm going. So, yep. Yep. what what I'm thinking is that when you hit this nebula, 
you receive the red agility arrow and it reduces your agility by one. Very simple. And I, I just think that's a really cool effect. It allow it opens up some space for FFG. I'm just going to move this around. Sorry, guys, who were watching the video. Um, uh, sorry. Go, go ahead. It, so it uh, allows it, them. I have a question on it. But, yeah, uh, it gives it, If this is how it goes, if it is a red agility arrow, which I think it is, um, it gives FFG an opportunity to build in agility reducing effects that are not linked to tractor. Now, Tractor is that really cool ability where you can move things Tractor's around. So strong. It's so good. And it, just, it gives FFG an opportunity to still use that minus agility um, ability, but just the agility part, not worry about moving people around. So, so I, I love where you're going with this, by the way. That 100% makes total sense with it. You're enhance, enhance uh, <laughs> uh, onto that exact uh, iconography. Um, it makes a hundred percent sense to me. Now, what doesn't make sense to me, Dion, that is a red token. It is red tokens, and especially square red tokens, uh, only get discarded at a specific time. That's right. This is right. You're right. And oh, I know. Th they would... I played this game. <laughs> <laughs> so that means, I mean, I I'm guessing that you. Most likely, it's. I think it's going to be linked to a blue maneuver. Like if your if your ship's all jacked up, right? So we're thinking theme here. FFG has been linking a lot of things to really theme. -y. So like, oh no, I've been hit by the nebula. I've lowered my agility. I have to take. I have to slow down, so that I can repair my ship. I have to do a blue maneuver, something easy for my ship to do. And I I think that's how you might clear it. Or they might just say after you execute a maneuver, like. But like the steps were like how you how, how you still get stress even though if you do a blue maneuver through a through a debris like you after you execute a maneuver you could lose a token somehow, but um yeah I I think most likely it's blue maneuver to to take it away that's what I'm thinking to keep the consistency there. Uh, my only my only problem with that is what if you're stressed and have reduced agility Tall. do they both clear on a <laughs> blue move? <laughs> FAQ incoming. Maybe you have to choose. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, well, I I love that idea. I didn't even thought about that. Well, I guess I hadn't uh, looked too hard onto that interesting token. Uh, what about what about the next, the other token you got there? Yeah, let's enhance again. <laughs> Will's talking about the one on my nose, right there, the garbage, right? Yeah, what is that? It's got, is that a blue streak? Because, I mean... It does look like there's a blue streak. Generated yeah. images, so it's not like a lens flare or something, right? A flash glossiness. Right. So it's got to be in the... In the In art. the actual, yeah, art. Could this be something... Where'd it go? Oh, sorry. You're making it smaller again. <laughs> uh, no, stop moving it for just a second. <laughs> Hands I was up. trying to see... I was trying to see if possibly that could be dropped out of the back of the ship because I see it's kind of flat on one side. I do I, I do think it is. I think that goes directly in the nubs. And Okay. And and is uh it's it's rig cargo shoot. It's a mini one. That's what I think it is. Rig cargo shoot light. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh um I think it'll be interesting to see. Uh, well, yeah, they're not going to spoil every card. That would be cool. But uh, we'll see. I uh, will say that there is a whole bunch of charges. <laughs> In the set, uh, yeah. There's charges for days. I guess, I guess if you're running two different cluster missiles, you need eight charges or so, plus healing droids. So, okay. Uh, you know, my biggest problem with all this, with all everything that comes in this pack is the number 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. Why? You can only fly eight ships, Dion. <laughs> because so that, fly eight ships. so that you can have, you know, like I don't want to have number f four just like my opponent. I want number ten. Ten is my favorite number. If you ever wondered, 
Like, I'm, okay, well, only, I'm going to put 10 on my ships. Only a couple more years until they hit 99, and then we got to figure out a new way of doing that. <laughs> How do we fit three numbers on this thing? They they switch to letters. That's what they got to do. And oh, my after- God. Go back, going back to letters. Don't even... <laughs> Let's keep going because I can't. I can't spend twenty five minutes trying to talk about that. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's super cool. And then we also got. Oh no, right, not ready to talk about that yet. Um, we also got the Arc One Seventy. Sorry, I don't have any art for that one up here. We got the Arc One Seventy. They did reveal one pilot, but I will tell you that I just forgot to pull it. Um, so I'm gonna stall while uh while I do that. But it has. The so, s- go ahead, take the wheel, take the wheel, Will. Okay, so uh, talking about what we were just uh, seeing, actually, I can see super clearly now in this spread the square red agility token. Um, but there's no there's no nebulas in the arc pack, so maybe that's tied to something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think ability. is what I do think is interesting is that there's calculates, uh, even though that these are clones and uh that there's weapons disabled as well which i think is very interesting um to see well it'll be interesting to find out what kind of little abilities all these little clones have (laughs) all these little clones running around doing their clone thing um yeah so where's where's the name so we had sweet sinker. sinker yeah so one thing about the the Arc 170 is that it has the same exact dial, actions. Everything is the same from the Rebel one. Nothing has changed. Same ship. Man, those Rebels fixed this thing up good. It has not changed at all in the years uh, to the Rebellion. So we have uh, one ship, one pilot revealed because all the other ones, the text is way too small. I can't enhance enough. Um, my eyes were hurting when I was trying. When, when I got to this part for the Arc 170, you'll notice in my, my full video, that I cut it a little short. I was like, I can't tell what it is. I'm moving on. It was like hour like 10 of writing a script. I was out. <laughs> um, so Sinker is the name of this pilot. And it says, while a friendly ship at range 1 to... While a friendly ship at range 1 to 2 in your left or right firing arc performs a primary attack, it may re-roll one attack die. And I'm sorry, I said firing arc. It's just arc. Left or right arc. I find this really cool. That we're starting to use the different quadrants of the base now. Like they made an ability ability for that, like a teamwork ability. I think that's really cool. Yeah, uh, it kind of reminds me of like uh, the Moldy Crow, where you want to have your or not Moldy Crow, the Rebel Hawks, like say Janors, that you want your friendlies in your arc. Um, but it was always that mobile side arc right that you're kind of looking at your friendlies with yep and that's cool so it's less of a formation and kind of more like coming in as a line yeah or maybe this ship is like kind of like the pivot right and then all the other ships are kind of swinging around around it on the outside yeah it's it's super cool just seeing ffg starting to introduce this um you know the use of their different mechanics I just, I love seeing it. I love seeing it. Yeah, I mean, they have the iconography. Uh, They, in theory, a ship could just only have, like, could only fire out of arcs like that. Yes. Like, left and right for some reason. Yeah. I'd be in. I'm in. FFG. Like how the U-Wing probably should have been. But, (sighs) (laughs) anyways. Uh, Uh, Missed opportunity, FFG. (laughs) You're not wrong there, Will. I think so. Too. Uh, what what else do you got about the arc? I mean, there isn't, there really isn't much to because the die the dial is the same, action is the same. We got one pilot. Um, it's got a sexy new paint job, like it's fresh, factory fresh. Ooh, yeah. Arc one seventy. Look it looks really really good. Um, other than that, it's it's kind of meh. It's kind of plain Jane. Um, that's pretty cool. But one yeah, thing that is in that spread are some of the, some sweet upgrade cards. There's some crazy stuff in there. We have, and you know what? I think this is worth just taking a second, and I'm going to pull this picture so that we can get it on the stream. Okay. 
So give me give me a second. Yeah, I, I know uh, what peoples you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other things in there. You have uh, like a specialized gunner slot. It looks like with a charge. Uh, you got proton torpedoes. You got expert handling. Um, this this pack also comes with a bunch of additional cards as well. And it seems to be <clears throat> some sort of synchronized console. Has to have a, a target lock, and it says something about charges range one to three. Yeah, so that one I was able to enhance that one actually. What does that say? It, uh, after you perform an attack. After you perform an attack, uh, if you have, oh, this is, you can okay, pass the target, target lock. lock one. Yeah, you can pass oh, target yeah. locks to a friendly ship at great. range one or somebody else who has that upgrade at range one to uh, one to three. Yeah, basically, yeah. When you spend it, they get it. Yep. That's, that's going to be good. Yeah, but, but it's not when you spend it when you're attacking. It has to be you still have it left over. Oh, they oh they get your left over one. Mm-hmm. It's after good. you finish attacking. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, it, exactly. It makes it not so uh, not so OP. Uh, so you could say a high pilot skill ship could shoot one, a proton torpedo and be like, I'm good on modifying it. Why don't my friend, why don't you shoot one too? Oh, you didn't want to use your target lock either? Well, how about your friend shoot it as well? And just get off this like low pilot skill kind of alpha strike that your opponent wasn't expecting. Uh, it's got some play there. I, I kind of like that. We're getting into the different themes of these factions. And I definitely, uh, whereas the, the separatists might be more of like the hive mind. Um, I like how the the... The clones are just straight up like helping each other out. Yeah. But how how would you describe it different than from how rebels do it? Or is it too early to say? I, too early to call. Okay. Too early to call, I think. Um did you get it? I I Did you get those peoples? I am so close. What did I do here? I'm Oh, I do have it there. See, I had it ready the whole time. Hold on, guys. This is just technology not cooperating. Actually, it's me using technology wrong. Um, give me a second. Sorry. I just need a, need a minute. There we go. And this should do a thing now. There it is. I had the ARCS 170 linked in there the whole time. <laughs> I really did. I just had to delete something to get it to show. Oh, okay, so, okay. So I promise. I was there. So, um... Right there in the middle, you see some really cool upgrade cards. We'll go ahead and we'll we'll enhance here um, as well for anybody who's watching at home if you haven't looked at this article yet. So we have oh, they're distinct. You can see them. <laughs> yeah, you have the, the uh, Darth Palpy Palpy McPalpy face right there. So we have Chancellor Palpatine. Actually, in the video, I said Emperor Palpatine. That was looks like it's super Whoa. wrong. Yeah, messed up. Not the Emperor. He's not Emperor Whoa. yet. Oh, yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad at my job. <laughs> um, I got excited. I was like, oh, Emperor. I saw an R. Um, so, yeah, Chancellor Palpatine, and we also have a Darth Sidious. Now, here we go. L let me let me speculate a little bit here because I'm going to play off of a theory that I gave in the video. So um, the Chancellor Palpatine card, I think if you if we get big enough, I think that the word, right? Let me get where's my finger? Right here, right at the top of this card. I think that says setup. Something like this side face up in the setup. And my thought is that when you flip this card, you know what's on the other side? Emperor Palpatine. You mean Darth Sidious? No. Are, are, no. are we looking at two different? Are we looking at the two sides of the same card? Are I don't, we, I don't are, think so. Are we looking at two different cards? Mm -mm. I think we're looking at two different cards, and on the back side of Chancellor Palpatine is Emperor Palpatine. You go from Chancellor to Emperor, or you just get a different. You get you get the uh, messed up face Chancellor Palpatine. Oof. Could be. Because I feel like, right, in in that picture, if you look at the the art in this picture, there's a, a lightsaber being held to his face. Like, you're, you're under I arrest. Agree. It's possibly purple, maybe blue. Oh, mace. Mace. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Could be anything. 
Uh, what we do know, though, is that it gives a force, and you can use that force to do a purple coordinate. Yeah, assuming that's how purple actions work, which was which we think it does, right? Use an action. It would make sense. Yep. Because, well, here, here's why I think this particular card uh, explains it to me. Because you would get your force charge, your single one on this card, refreshed at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. And then you would set a dial, and then you would execute a maneuver, and then you would do an action. And if you coordinated, it would give you a force charge, but you'd already be at full force then. Yep. Exactly. So, so you'd almost have to. I mean, it's, it's speculation, sure, but... I just feel like that's that's how it has to be. Speculate responsibly. We are. Yeah. <laughs> but it has I'm not wildly speculating. It has like logic and reasoning and like <laughs> uh, thought no, out yeah. deduction. Absolutely. I agree. I totally totally agree. Yeah, man. So this is I think mean, there's there's a lot to unpack here. Like I said, I did like a really in depth video. This is we just kind of did a, a once over. We just kind of quickly went through it. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can go ahead and uh, and go to YouTube to check that out. I lost the notes. There's I have so many windows open right now. I don't know where anything is anymore. Uh, that there, was it. I, I think. Uh, oh, we were gonna talk about the A wing. We we're gonna talk about the resistance yeah. A wing. Okay. Want to go over the A wing? Uh, yeah. Let's. Yeah, but we'll go through it quick. So today, FFG, you know what? FFG gave it to us. We might as well talk to a bit, talk about That's it. That's right. They say, Gold Squadron, we like you. Here you go. So uh, Resistance A-Wing, we got a spoiler article about that. You know that it's coming out in Wave 2 with the Resistance and uh, lots of cool stuff in it. Awesome looking model in that pretty uh, blue and white, distressed white paint scheme. Let's start by talking about the dial. What's on that dial, Will? Uh, the main thing is, to me is the hard two blues, uh, also the hard ones, and uh, you have a uh, all the all of the regular maneuvers: two banks, two forward, uh, three banks, hard threes. Uh, you also have three sloops. Yeah. Um, four forward blue and. A five forward blue and a five K turn. Uh, that's that's a lot of blue. Uh, that's tons. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a ten. 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 Where have we seen a ship that had ten de-stressing maneuvers before? I don't know. It probably wasn't very good. <laughs> oh, Makilo. <laughs> Makilo. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's a good good uh, dial. I like that five K. Yeah, the no no short turns yeah. but honestly i don't think the ship needs them nope that's because it can shoot out the back exactly <laughs> which i think leads perfectly to the next thing uh the ship ability for all of these rza wings are are the refined gyro stabilizers you can rotate your turret arc so this ship has a turret arc um mm -hmm. only to your front or back arc period after you perform an action, you may perform a red boost or a red rotate turret action. Super cool. Uh, I have uh, some very interesting um, things to say about it. Go for it. Uh, I, <laughs> to be fair, I, I really like that uh, it retains the boost um, in addition to the rotate after you perform an action, so it still has that built-in linked action. Um, I do like how, uh, as I was alluding to before, you don't need to K-turn, do short K-turns, because you just do, do a regular maneuver and flip your arc backwards, and it's kind of like you did a little K-turn. Um, what's interesting to me is that this ship then does not have a forward-facing arc, mm -hmm. which means it is actually locked out of a uh, some upgrades uh for example outmaneuver refers to a forward facing uh attack yep is is it primary outmaneuver primary uh, so you could if you for firing a like a missile that uses the front arc like 
uh, proton rockets? No, is is that bullseye? That's bull. That's bullseye. Mm. But you see where I'm getting with yeah. this, though, is that it uh, it locks it out just a little bit. But I guess it allows for turret card upgrades. Yeah, I mean, um, it doesn't have a gunner slot, I assume. But I don't know. That that's very interesting to me. I like I do like its versatility. Um, dude, shoot, uh, shooting on your back is gonna be good. Tell you that much right now. It's gonna make that ship pretty easy to fly, uh, yeah. especially when you need to like run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll uh, have solutions when you're when you're disengaging. I think the challenge with it though is people got to be careful that if they're using the back arc too much, it's it's like the arc one seventy problem. Like if you're shooting while trailing away, eventually you're out of the fight and you have to do a K turn. So it's it's choosing when is the right time to um you know to get turned around because you're eventually going are going to have to turn around. Uh I mean do Just, you though? But it depends I mean, depending on far... depending on where the like the direction of the fight. Like let's say you are trailing away and or let's say you're trailing right like your 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 bearing is right, and the mm -hmm. uh, the fight is moving to the left. Eventually, you're just completely out of range, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have to turn it around. That's all I'm saying. Like so, I've seen some people take their arc 170 and be completely out of the fight for a couple of turns because they K turned one turn too late. Okay, I can see what you're saying there. Um... I just think it's gonna be really good. No, I do. I do. Th I agree. I absolutely agree. So the only, the only issue, in my opinion, uh, is that you uh, like the jump master. If you ever played that in second edition? I have. You cannot rotate your arc. Well, I saw you play Dengar. Uh, you weren't rotating your arc. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't have been. Uh, I did not. But. Uh, the only way to move your arc is by stressing yourself and performing an action, which is, uh -huh. fine. but the stress is interesting though, because that will, and, and though, I guess you could still boost and move your arc though. They have a boost on their action bar. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that, I, I, I like it. It's, it's distinct from any other shift we've seen. And that's, that's what I want more of. More unique styles of ships. Yep. And I'm I'm imagining that the Thai SF for the First Order is going to have a similar clause to the beginning of the refined uh, gyro stabilizers, stabilizers, where it probably has a, a mobile arc as well. Now that we've seen that this A-wing can do this thing where it flips its, its wings back. Uh, most likely it'll only be able to shoot out the front and the back. Some people have said that's what it has already. We don't have confirmation, but... I'm sorry, what, uh, what ship? The TIE SF? Special Forces TIE from the First Order? Oh, no, it does. Have, it has a front arc. It does? And and it has an, a oh, it has, rotating It has arc. them both? Oh, okay, cool. Yes. Oh, it does that thing but where you... it three attack dice in the front? Am I right? No, it's only if you have a special gunner. Then oh, it remember okay. remember the I don't. special I don't. forces. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Think back to the special forces first edition title, right? Where it gave you two options: three dice at the front or double tap. Yeah. Uh, in second edition, it with a I believe it's a gunner with a very particular gunner. You can mimic that ability, mm -hmm. but. Uh, you have to spend an action rotating your arc around. So you can only double tap if you have the turret out the back. And you can only ever shoot three dice if you have the turret facing forward, overlapping your regular arc. Okay, that's that's what that, that beautiful photographic memory you have. That's Thank God you got it, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I yeah, no, you, you, know what, you know what sticks on my mind? Uh, that ship having four linked white rotate actions. Yep. Uh, I can't get that out of my mind. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty distinct. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we did get some pilots. We did get some pilots for uh, for these ships mm -hmm. here. So we'll, we'll just take a quick glance through them. We got four. According to the 
Um, the article, they said that there are going to be six, I believe. Let me double check my notes. I did co literally copy and paste that in. Are you with the, you have a cat? Uh, there is a cat here. Meow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's flown by one of six pilots, including four unique pilots. Yeah, four unique uh, pilots, there's... and we have all four unique pilots. We have them all. We just don't have the generics okay. right now. So, um, first one here is uh, Zari Bangel, Initiative 3. You do not skip your perform action step after you per partially execute a maneuver. That's pretty cool. It's like Arvel, Arvel, uh, Arvel's action cousin. Arvel. Yeah, action, there you go. Action Arvel. I like that better. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds great. Like, uh, I've, I've played a lot of ships that didn't care about actions, where I just ran into other ships. Um, so it it sounds great. Yeah. Uh, One thing I, I'm imagining, like, uh, I do a lot of self bumping, blocking yeah. my own ship. Uh, this would be a perfect candidate for that. Yeah, the idea which is just kind of an idea here. You purposely hit a ship, right? You block them. They can't uh, – or, like, you, you hit them so that they can't move. And then you, like, focus and then link to the rotate to shoot behind you. And you've taken away a shot in front of you, and you have a shot out the back. Right? Like, mm -hmm. stuff like that is possible with, uh, uh, with this pilot. That's an initiative three? Yep. Uh, yeah, see, I'm imagining uh, Initiative 2 tries, uh, tries to come up and block you, and you just barrel roll and boost right around it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I'm good. Yeah, very cool. I like that. All right, next one here is uh, Greer Sonal. Uh, what is What does this guy do, girl, guy, person? Uh, yeah, this person, after they fully execute a maneuver, you may rotate your turret. Uh, beautiful. Doesn't stress yourself. Um, and yeah, uh, this is a candidate cause it, this is, this particular pilot is going to take real advantage of just linking into the red boost a lot. Uh, in fact, all the time. Mm-hmm. Because you're getting basically both of your gyro stabilizers all the time. That's a good pilot ability. For this chassis, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems really good. I think this is definitely going to be one of the first pilots that people look at uh, right away. If you're, if you're really into uh, you know, maneuverable ships and, and thinking this way. Looks, looks solid. Then we start getting into that. Initiative five, the initiative five race, we got Lulo Lampar and says, while you defend or perform a primary attack, if you are stressed, you must roll one fewer defense dice or one additional attack die. So a couple things I want to address here. That or is basically an and by the way. They have to put the ward or in there because the timing is different. Because defense dice, you only do that when you're defending and attack dice is only when you're attacking. But, um, basically, when you're stressed, you're, you're minus one agility, but you also get to attack harder. So, you're, you get three dice out of your, out of your, uh, your mobile arc, but, uh, you become much less defensive you know I, i'm curious to see how people are going to fly these because with having only four hull yes you have three agility like a, a wings in in first editions for instance they could pop so easily like just like just like tie fighters and stuff like that like if these are expensive i'm thinking like this pilot in particular right you're you're lowering your agility on purpose like i don't that feels bad that feels bad. I know that three three attack dice is nice when you can have it, but maybe if you could figure out a way to get the stress only when you attack, but then lower initiative. Sh I don't know. Yeah. What do you, What do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if there's a way to stress yourself, or uh, I think the better way might be to clear your stress after you shoot. Mm. Um, after you shoot at five, and then say you wouldn't be stressed for a four. I don't think that's possible. Uh. I think this is this is uh, if you can arc dodge, this is the ship for you. 
and it's going to reward you for it. Uh, you mentioned pricing uh, for these ships, uh, all about them points. Uh, by the way, uh, Jake Farrell and Arvel, who have a very similar chassis in the RZ1 A Wing, uh, Arvel at three cost 36, and Jake at four cost 40. So I would say that these have to be still under 50 points. Okay. Would That's you good. would you agree even yeah. with the uh refined gyro stabilizers? I mean about, that that about that, sound, that sounds about 50, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's that's mass to me anyways cuz you're getting that initiative 5 which is really good and this guy that's still uh if you can line it up right four dice range 1. Yeah. Um just don't just don't be caught off guard. I think this is the A-wing who uh might need juke and to be taking evades a lot like uh, evade boost or evade rotate quite often okay because you're gonna need to make sure that he's not one shot or they aren't one shot that's very true huh very cool well um last pilot here go ahead take it will this is tally uh while you while an enemy in your bullseye performs an attack, you may spend one of her charges, uh, which she recurs uh, each round. If you do, the defender of the attack rolls one additional die. So that could work for herself. Uh, that could work for a friendly ship. That's their example in the article. Uh, she is helping defend one of those big bombers uh, by giving it an extra agility. I, I personally... I uh, think bullseyes are difficult to pull off, and this ability is fairly conditional. It also only works once per round. So I think um, it, here's my opinion. Maybe not just on this ability, but also with uh, uh, the other initiative five. I don't think that they gave them very good abilities to keep them cheap. What do you think about that? You think they gave them crap of the abilities on purpose? I don't think they're bad abilities, but... I, I think they're bad. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're great abilities. Uh, I mean, if Tally's was uh, for every... Well, yeah, for every ship you shot inside your bullseye, the defender would get... like so That would be one thing. Um but yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we'll see. It's it's the same thing. Uh, we'll see how often that can trigger inside the bullseye. I think it's really strong. I mean, it can help protect her. She'll she'll probably be the most defensive of these if you can line up those bullseyes. Um, what I don't like is that bullseye doesn't work out the rear. Yeah. So she's very forward facing. Hmm. That's a that's a great but point I, there. I guess technically. Yeah, well, an enemy ship in your bullseye. Yeah, she doesn't even have to be shooting at the ship, technically. So I guess nope. she could be shooting at a, a ship behind her, though she has a ship in her bullseye. That'll be interesting. Yeah, it's, um, you, uh, you we'll, want to keep we'll your to... enemy in front of you, or the p person that you're trying to be more defensive from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, you, you said it, that these, the, I just feel like these aren't good abilities to keep them cheap mm -hmm. um, because i think the chassis itself has a lot of potential yeah I, I i agree so we'll have to see how much they see play i know that a lot of people are excited about them i mean i i think the chassis is really cool what i'm ex actually excited to see is how much the um, the generic pilots the non-unique pilots are going to be because i i think i might if i put together a resistance squad that might be some of the first ships i i go and grab for um just to be able to get this chassis on the table and of course when these ships do drop we'll be doing you know of course you know we have our, our wednesday night streams and i'll be playing you know all the new stuff right away to get you guys some ideas of what this what all this does <laughs> in uh in real life so we have some uh some upgrade cards three upgrade cards that we can see in this pack the first one is there on the right side of the spread it's heroic and um we were speculating that this is the like faction card here 
Yep, you see Tally, Tally in the uh, in the art there. Yeah, about about to die. Spoilers. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or at least see her friends die, and then she's gonna go. Never mind. Go watch, go watch the Last Jedi. I'm sure everything will be fine. Uh, <laughs> heroic. While you defend or perform an attack, if you have only blank results and have two or more results, you may re-roll any number of your dice. So, layman's terms. If you blank out while rolling two or more, um, if like as long as you roll two or more dice and you get only blanks, you get to, you basically get a free target lock. Try again, hero. It just didn't work out that time. Let's try it again, and that's def- that's defending too. So, um, pretty cool there. Um, prime thrusters. What's uh, what's prime thrusters, my friend? Uh, while you are stressed, or uh, let's see, there it is. While you have two or fewer stress tokens, you can perform barrel roll and boost actions even while stressed. Uh, so same uh, thing as last time, right? Is that I, I don't did that change from first edition? Might have been three, but I, the two sounds right. I think I think it's unchanged. Mm-hmm. Very similar uh, ability. It's it's good. We know that it's good. it's uh it you know allows you to uh, be more maneuverable when. You're not supposed to be. Yeah, it can really catch your. I think uh, it could really catch your opponent off guard when they're like, "Oh, well, that A wing is definitely gonna hard two. and you're like, "Nope, hard one barrel roll." Barrel rolling yeah. stress quad jumpers. Watch out! Ah, don't wait. Shh. We don't talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> the secrets. The secrets out. Alrighty, and the last upgrade card that we saw here. Was the Ferrosphere paint, which looks interesting. Um, it's cool, cool art. You see the the black one in there. Um, after an enemy ship locks you, if you are not in that bull, that ship's bullseye, that ship gains a stress token. I say it's pretty solid. Yeah, for a tech card, because I know like, uh, you know, I think like this is a tech card that might actually get get some play there is not that many uh enemy stressing mechanics out there and this is an enemy stressing mechanic that puts it in your enemy's hands some people might argue it's like well i could just not target lock but if your opponents like let's say they're, they're all about you know shooting off proton torpedoes right they're gonna have to lock mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. they have to Ooh, if they lock in the wrong if they do oh man check this out what if you have a ship that like has a linked action, you have like target lock and link to something else, and you lock a ship with Ferrosphere paint. Boom, you get a stress token. Now you don't get to link action anymore. Sad. Interesting. I I do like the uh I uh, the bullseye restriction on this, and it's I assume it's to keep it off the the star fortress bombers mm-hmm. the large base bombers because it's it's really easy to keep them in the bullseye if you're just looking at them uh <laughs> large base <laughs> yeah yeah big ship <laughs> yeah uh so but i think this is going to be like the top tier um the top tier tech right mm-hmm. the most expensive tech there's gonna be like For this sure. has to cost a lot of points and i uh it's interesting that it is resistance only Mm-hmm. Oh, only resistance, no, uh, no fo, no scum, none of that. Yeah, there's a chance you're gonna see it on Poe, just by the art here. I think they're suggesting you should put it on. <laughs> hey, buddy, <laughs> put it on Poe. Yeah, right. Yeah, it seems seems good. Well, you know, that's that's everything we saw in the RZ A wing. Um, article there might be some other little tidbits in there but it was something that's kind of got dropped in our lap and like oh let's just look through this really quickly um but ex- i'm excited for the first order and the resistance to come out like i think uh getting factions number four and five i'm interested to see how people react having such a limited uh you know ship and card pool 
maybe we'll see the rise of the second edition format, um, the limited format rise a little bit here. But um, yeah, RZ2 A Wing coming to a store near you. Fourth quarter, any any time now, FFG. Can I just have my A Wings, please, and my T70s? Right, we're in the fourth quarter. Uh, are they? I'm double. I'm double checking right now. That's what they said. Um, if uh, if they're on delivery or not, Let's try to get an update on it. Doubt it. Well, while while you're doing, do it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was very really laugh. Yep. <laughs> so, um, before we leave you guys, it's just a couple things here. This is our YouTube spotlight. We have uh three big things actually just got released on YouTube. Um. All of the games from the Minoc Open, if you were watching that stream, maybe you missed it, have all been put on YouTube, everything. We had some transcoding issues, um, which is why it took so long to get up there. But I solved the issue. Thank you to some patience and some technology and some and some time and more patience, really, is what it came down to. Um, we were able to get it done. Easy peasy. Like, everything's fine. All the games are saved. And um, <laughs> let me just tell you, we almost didn't have those games. Let me tell you that. Let's just put it that way. But everything's fine. We're all good. We've been uh, teasing it a little bit. We talked about the Grand Republic. We had a, I did a full breakdown. You can go ahead and check that out on YouTube as well. Uh, we have a lot of different graphics and, and, and different things where we go into more detail uh, there. And then uh, Quick Tip Series is going strong. That's released every Monday for the last four weeks and forever. That's the plan. Every Monday, no matter what. There will be a quick tips video until there isn't one on a Monday and you guys are mad. So <laughs> I, like, I, like for instance, like next week's quick tips video um, is already recorded and ready to go. But it uh, because I'm getting my wisdom teeth out on Friday, like I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk during the weekend to get it ready for the next Monday. So uh, that's already done. But this one's important, guys. How to barrel roll in second edition. It's not the same as first edition. It's not. The rules are different, especially for those medium bases. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. So, Will, did you see? Is are are are, are the resistance? Are they are they on the boat? Are they shipping? Any information? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. You have no hope for us. Um, the uh, the conversion kits. We're last updated 9.6 and currently are at the printer. Sad. Uh, the, I didn't even actually see just regular expansions anywhere. So no update on that. We're in the dark still. I mean, they're releasing articles. So Yeah, I mean, it has to be coming uh, anytime now. How many more articles are left after the RZ? What articles have they done already? The T70? Have, have they done a T71? I don't think so yeah because they talked about poe didn't they no no and I, I think what we know from pope i is from just stuff that we've seen uh they've so far talked about the t70 they and have. they've talked about the fo and now the rz uh rz2 a wing uh, which means that they only have the mining guild tie the left sf and no, the SF's in the conversion kit. Oh, you're I mean, right. They, they could do articles kit. about the conversion kit for sure. True. But oh no, they did do that October eighth. A new order, or maybe that's when they announced it. I don't know. They only have like one more article before that wave drops. So yeah, uh, any any time now. Uh, there's no reason for them to be re releasing articles without it coming soon. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna we're just we're gonna run through the ending of the podcast here because the live people who are watching live want to go home. People in their car are like, please end the podcast. It's so long. There's <laughs> there's at least there's at least one person going like, no, continue talking. Like, no, I have to edit this podcast before I go to bed today to get it out tomorrow and do all that. So, um, just real quick here, uh, Lord Vader. He asked, "What have you done with those plans?" Uh, we have them, Lord Vader. I have them, and that is Pax Unplugged is our next big event that's happening uh, November 30th through December 2nd. Make sure you tune into that stream for more awesome games and giveaways and all the stuff. It's going to be super exciting, and if you're going, hit me up. We can hang out a little bit, grab some food. Uh, before we go, Will, uh, any shout-outs you got? Oh man, off the top of my head, jeez. Uh, I don't know. Um, 
I don't crickets. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, none for right now. It's, it's all right, man. It's all right. Well, you can watch all of our live X-Wing events um, at twitch.tv slash Gold Squadron Podcast. Remember to renew your Twitch Prime subscription every 30 days it's literally free money it is the freest way to help gold squadron podcast content it, if you have amazon prime connect it it's easy if you don't know how to we got a video on our youtube page to show you how to do it uh also we have our youtube uh channel it's been growing exponentially i mean we're up to like almost 5,000 subscribers there which is awesome let's get that let's continue to grow that and we're going to be bringing you way more content uh on youtube so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any of that awesome stuff but don't worry podcast isn't going anywhere the live streams aren't going anywhere we're just diversifying our content we're making sure we're getting all kinds of stuff on there um then also patreon if you want to become a group part of the group of the largest supporters that we have at gold squadron podcast go to patreon.com slash gold squadron thank you to those patrons we mentioned earlier during the cast you guys are fantastic and thank you to every single one of you who has taken the time to become a patron uh you guys are the reason uh why we can do all the crazy things we do which ah uh, i don't want to talk about that yet maybe i should you know what maybe we'll after dark uh you know what you only see see you only get the after dark see my knocks don't do act you know oh, my knock after dark on their on their on their uh their podcast you know throwing a little shade here but see the real after dark isn't ever published the only time the only people who will ever see the after dark is when you're watching live so just remember that if you're listening oh, to this in the future you know yeah. Before we go to uh, After Dark or yep. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Late night. Um, Late night. Uh, I do have a I do have a shout out. Yeah, okay. You, you caught me off guard and my brain finally <gasps> caught up. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, Brad Streisick. We had him on uh, the show a couple uh, weeks ago. He ran the Turkey Shootout, uh, a Towards for Tots charity tournament. Um, so a big shout out to him. The tournament went super smooth. Uh, I got a bunch of toys. I came in second. My Echo got hard countered by a Paylob in the final, uh, which is unfortunate. But I uh, had a really fun day uh, up in Dubuque. It was a fairly good turnout. So uh, shout out to Brad for putting together that event. Yeah, you guys had like 20 people, right? Yes. That's awesome, man. That's super sweet. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening, for watching now and in the future. My name's is Dio Morales. His name is William Hagwood. Marcel never made it on. He's probably still at work. He's on that hustle. That man works so hard. Gold Squadron. Out. <laughs>